back, relax, maybe get yourself a snack. Me and you gonna have a little chat about books. Hi guys! So I am here today to do some graphic reviews of some of the comics and graphic novels I've recently been reading. So let's get straight into it and I will start with the two single issues that I've most recently read. The first of these is Wraithborn, issue number one. This is by M. Chen and Joe Benitz, who are the same team who write Lady Mechanica, which you guys may have seen a review for fairly recently. I adore that series, so as soon as I heard that they were bringing out a new series, I of course had to jump on board and find out what it was all about. And I have to say, I was not disappointed. I really, really enjoyed this. As you can probably see from the few pages that I'm showing you, this is a rather bizarre series. It's about a young girl who is fairly normal. She lives with her father and they have a fairly normal life. She goes to school, she does things in her day and then one day she gets involved in something she didn't expect and inherits the power to become the Wraithborn, which means that she has to fight these kind of demon-like creatures that come to Earth and try and inhabit people and, and wreak havoc. So she inherits this, and it's kind of the first issue is the backstory to how that happens, so I'm not going to say anything more about the plot, but the artwork is incredible, just as it is in Lady Mechanica, the series, so I definitely adored that. I didn't have any issues with it, and I feel like it sets up a great beginning to what could become a really interesting series. I had so much fun reading this, and I definitely want to continue it. Whether I will wait for the actual trade paperback to come out or not, I haven't decided, but I do really, really like this series from what I read of it, and I definitely am looking forward to continuing it. So for Wraithborn issue number one, I gave it a four out of five stars and I will be picking up the next one at some point. The next one that I have to talk to you about is also a single issue and it's also a series that I am very much loving right now. That is Monstrous issue number four. This is by Sara Takeda and Marjorie Liu and I absolutely love this series. I say it every time I review one of these but I genuinely do adore this series. It is about a young girl, she has only one arm and she is part of a crazy world where she has managed to inherit this crazy power. Again it's kind of in a similar vein to Wraithborn now that I think about it. The artwork within this is very, very oriental inspired. It definitely has a slight manga feel to it, if that's something you're into. Even if it's not, you might like this anyway, because I'm not a huge manga fan myself, or I haven't tried a lot of it, but I adore this. It's in full colour, it's absolutely stunning. I'm sure you will agree that the pages are beautiful. We follow a young lady, as I say, she only has one arm. It's about these two different races and they have been at war for a while and there's a division between these two and there's this almighty crazy power that this young girl has and it's a bit crazy and wonderful and wacky and I love it and there's a character who's a fox who is the cutest thing ever and it's, it's just wonderful. It really makes me smile and interested every time I read it and I have such an obsession with this series. I have subscribed to it on Comixology and I love it every time each month I get a new one because I instantly read it and I love it so so much. I'm definitely going to buy the paperback version when it comes out because it's incredible and I would highly recommend that loads of you check this out and get on board and enjoy it because it's just wonderful. So with all that gushing you can probably anticipate that I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars and I really would recommend it and say that I love it. The next one I have to talk to you about is actually a comic and that is Phonogram Volume 1 Rue Britannia and this is by Kieran Gillen and Jamie McKelvey. Now I picked this one up quite a while ago, probably like half a year ago now, quite a long time ago, because I know that this is by some of the creators of the Wicked and the Divine series and if you've been following my channel for a while and watching some of these then you know that the Wicked and the Divine is a series I really enjoy, have an absolute passion for and just find fascinating. However, this series wasn't quite what I thought it was going to be. It kind of makes out that this is about this world where music comes as a magic and people can have this strange phonomancer magic which is to do with music and they can kind of have weird abilities that will manifest when music is playing and it kind of is all that but it really didn't play out in the way that I was hoping for. It wasn't as exciting as I thought it would be. I mean it sounds exciting but it wasn't as exciting as I thought it was going to be and also this is in black and white which isn't a bad thing because I still think the art is beautiful and I still think it's very typical of their style, this duo, and it definitely shows their origins. This was written way before The Wicked and the Divine, 
and I do think it's interesting. I do think it's a great little read if you're interested in something like Britpop, which is what this focuses on. I don't really know anything about Britpop, I must admit. Um, it wasn't something I was massively into and it's not something I had a particular knowledge about. We also have a quite arsey main character who's quite cynical, very cynical, very, very cynical. And I found it hard to connect to him and I found it hard to empathise with him because he wasn't a nice guy a lot of the time and I didn't really like him as a character and that kind of put me off a little bit. So this one was a hard one for me to get into. I actually read this with my boyfriend and both of us found it a little bit jarring and just a bit hard to enjoy. There were moments that I did enjoy and I do think that the story does come together in the end but I think it's so incomplete without knowing the Rip Pop references and because I didn't know them and I didn't get them Maybe I just wasn't meant to read this. Maybe it's kind of before my time. I don't know. I feel weird saying that, but maybe it is. Because I just, I didn't get it. I didn't get all of the stuff that was in there, unfortunately. And so maybe if I had, it would have got a better rating. But unfortunately, I only gave this a 2.5. It was okay. And I liked the artwork. But honestly, if the artwork had been bad, I don't think I would have continued with this series. However, I had heard that the next one was a better volume, so I decided after that to pick up the next volume, seeing as I already had it, and go straight into it in the hopes of enjoying this one a bit more. This is Phonogram, The Singles Club, and again, it's by the same team. This one is in full colour, so this one actually came out later, and it is in full colour, as you can see. I think this one worked better. This was, I think, seven different stories, each following one main character, set in the same world, but a couple of years later. And we do get re-emergence of the same character that we followed in the first volume. We also get introduced to lots of new characters with lots of new powers and backstories. All of these seven stories interlink with each other and cross over. And I felt like this was a much more cohesive storyline and much easier to grasp and much better in terms of I actually got some of the references so it all worked better and I plus loved the fact that it was in full colour. This is a shorter volume, it worked so much better for me than the first one did and I do love the colour tones and I do love the actual ideas behind this, I just think that the first volume didn't quite hook me. This one was much more engaging like I say and I do have a few issues from the next arc, so I will read them at some point and report back whether I still think this is a good series. I gave this one a 3 out of 5 stars. I did think it was better. I did think it was much improved on the first one. But I didn't think it was as good as Wicked and Divine. And I didn't think it was their best work together. And I didn't think it was something that really gripped me, even though it was an improvement. So... I liked it, I definitely thought that this was much better, but I still wouldn't say it's one I would hugely recommend unless you're massively into music, in which case you may love this because it really packs in musical references and it's hugely into that. The final volume that I have to talk to you about is Fables Volume 4, March of the Wooden Soldiers. This is by Bill Willingham, Mark Buckingham and Craig Hamilton and a couple of other people as well. I definitely enjoyed this but it took me a little while to get into this. This is a really chunky one for a single volume. Um, it's the longest one in the Fable series yet. The first issue within this tells a massive backstory and is in quite a different art style as you can see. It tells the story of Red Riding Hood and Boy Blue and how some of the Fables escaped from the adversary which is the main theme that we've been hearing about throughout all of these books. And I really enjoyed the backstory to it, but I did think it was a little bit long-winded at times. After the first issue, though, we go into the main storyline that ties everything we'd already had in the previous three volumes together. And it was really exciting. I was hooked. I was enjoying it. I felt like there was a lot going on. There was a lot of really exciting stuff happening with our characters. A lot of intrigue, a lot of mystery, a lot of suspicion that I had for certain characters as well. So I definitely liked that element. And although the first issue was a little bit slow for me. I think this is probably my favourite of the volumes so far. The artwork is fairly standard in Fables. It's very cartoon-like and you definitely have like stereotypical old style colours that are somewhat muted. Even though it's bright, it's still kind of muted colours. Um, I really enjoyed this though and I feel like even though the artwork isn't my favourite thing ever, I know who the characters are now and I know what they look like and I know what their personalities are like and I just kind of connect with them and I feel like this is a series that it grows on you with time and this series is growing on me. I love this series every time I dive back into it 
and I've heard that the artwork changes next volume, so I'm not sure how I feel about that because I like it as is, but I will report back when I do get to it. For this one, I gave it a 4.5 stars and I would definitely recommend Fables up to this point because I have been really, really liking them and they only seem to be getting better. I hope that the next volume is not quite as bad as some people have said and doesn't put me off, but I have the next six anyway, so I'm going to read them at some point and I will definitely report back with my thoughts when I get to them because I'm loving it so far and I don't see that changing too much anytime soon, so we'll have to see. Let me know your thoughts if you guys have read any of the ones that I just talked about or if you are planning to pick any of them up. Thank you all for watching. I will see you all again soon in another video. Bye! Me and you gonna have a little chat about the